I often have to remind myself that even if you're rightfully stressed about a lot of things going on in the world, you're going to be a lot more helpful if you get some sleep to so put your damn head on the pillow. That's what I tell myself at 4am. I'm Daniel Howell and welcome to Forever Scrolling, an attitude series about mental health, social media and getting through the night, where every week you will hear stories from me and other LGBTQ creators. This week we are talking about getting through the night. Getting through the night when you're feeling your worst can suck, but do not worry, you are not alone. Insomnia to me feels like so much pressure. Sometimes I've actually found myself just awake till like 3 a.m. even though I've been in bed since 10, ready to sleep. And then I'll just be mindlessly scrolling on my phone. Like you drank a really strong cup of coffee right before bed and now every thought you've ever had has come back to say hello. I'm the kind of person that like fixates on one bad thing that happened in the day and then thinks about it for about 16 hours. So I'll be awake at 3 a.m. going, I went to shake that person's hand and then I spilled a drink on them. And is, is that something that's worth literally losing my entire sleep over? No, but hey, that's the kind of important stuff that my brain thinks of at 3 a.m. There's a lot of things that keep me up at night personally. I have anxiety induced insomnia. So I struggle a lot with all sorts of things when it comes to trying to sleep at night. I'm the sort of person who's like playing a conversation 500 times in my head as I try to fall asleep and I'm like, God, Bradley, that was such a stupid thing to say and then I'm just there unable to sleep and it's great. A lot of my insomnia actually comes around the anxiety that I won't get enough sleep to perform well in whatever I'm doing the next day and sometimes I'm not doing anything the next day. But as I'm trying to fall asleep, I tell myself, you're not gonna get enough sleep and you're gonna be miserable and then I can't sleep because I'm so stressed about getting enough sleep. If I'm awake in the middle of the night, usually I'm fixated on one thing and I'm just panicking about it in circles for half an hour. So I usually just go, what's the worst case scenario? And then I go, oh, doesn't really matter that much. Guess I'll just go to bed now. I think what keeps me up at night is worrying about what's coming in the future and if I'm actually progressing how someone should at my age. I think we always compare ourselves to other people in our society. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have all these things and we see people doing this, buying houses, getting married, having kids. And for me, that scares the, the crap out of me. I don't know where I want to be in my life and I don't know what I'm doing right now is what I want to be doing in the future or if it will still make me happy in the future. The biggest thought what affected me in the past is my sexuality. I am a bisexual male and for a long time I was worried about what people would think of it and how society would react to it and I was so scared because of the horror stories that you hear about online that that literally scared everything what I did. I didn't want to act like I was different because I didn't want people knowing that I was different. So through my whole life, I've always struggled with insomnia. And the two things which have always helped me is one, making sure that I exercise and be a bit more physical, try and work my body into physical exhaustion because I noticed I struggled a lot more sleeping when I used to sit at a computer all day or I didn't really go out and do much. And you have to kind of work your body down till it feels like it needs some rest. I actually have insomnia, so I don't sleep very well at night. I mean, I've always had trouble sleeping because my brain is just overactive and I tend to think very quickly. And it's great for helping me lip read, I'm deaf, because I can run through all of the possible combinations of words incredibly quickly, but it is awful at 3 a.m. in the morning. The uncomfortable truth that I never like to accept is that if you do a bit of exercise during the day, you're probably going to sleep a lot better. Whereas if you have a pizza at 12 o'clock, then those calories are going to keep you up at night. These are the hard truths that I have to confront every single day. Most smartphones have a setting where you can adjust your phone's light temperature. Blue light will keep you awake, but warm light personally doesn't really affect me. And so sometimes I just read Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan fiction for hours until my brain is finally defeated. Honestly, for me, the best piece of advice I ever got about sleeping is be really cold. And I never believed a friend of mine who was like, look, if you're really hot and sweaty, you're just going to roll around thinking it's acceptable. But if you open that window and then you're freezing to death, you can just become this like burrito of warmth and then you'll just create your own little cocoon and fall asleep. So try to make your room um, below freezing and then you'll sleep really well. One of the things that I've started to do is listen to, oh, I think it's like sounds of nature on Spotify there's loads of like playlists of like rain nature rainforest countryside all that kind of stuff all that kind of really natural sounds that you get from just being outside outside of the hustle and bustle sometimes I've listened to those they seem to help 
sometimes I've listened to somebody's voice which is quite monotone so there's this really interesting YouTube channel which talks about like past criminal cases that have been solved have it on my phone next to my head and the person's voice is usually quite monotone so I'll just listen to that and usually on the times where I'm not super wired that helps and that helps me get to sleep eventually. So some of the things that I do during the day um, to help me sleep at night is I wake up early. Like I know if I wake up at eight, nine o'clock, even if I'm not really doing something, my body is getting used to being up there early. So it's gonna be when nine, 10 o'clock comes, she go like, okay, Justin, it's time to go to bed, girl. Like it's, we getting tired. Uh, and we need to rest. So even if I'm not going to sleep, I'm in the bed and I'm getting to that relaxing point of, oh girl, it's time to go to bed. Sometimes you might feel tempted to get out of bed and go make another cycle post. And hey, that might work for some people, but honestly, just closing your eyes and lying still can give you rest. And even if you don't manage to successfully get a night of sleep, if you don't just get up at you know 3 a.m. and just watch an entire season of The Simpsons, I promise you'll feel better. So close your eyes, think positive thoughts, and you'll feel better in six hours. Often at night is when your mental health can feel at its lowest because the world kind of falls away and then you're just left alone with the, the thoughts that you've been pushing to the back of your mind. But the one thing I'd say is you always feel better in the morning. If you're ever laying awake in the darkness thinking everything is really bad, honestly, sometimes you get a good night's sleep and you'll have a totally different outlook in the morning. So it's the toughest time to get through, but if you do, I promise you'll feel better. Thanks for watching this attitude video with me, Daniel Howell. And remember, you will get through this night. You are going to be okay. Leave a comment down below sharing your stories if you're happy to do so and give this a like if you enjoyed it. And if you are interested in laughing at my pain and me going a bit too deep into the dark hole of my own sorry state and learning some stuff about mental health, you can pre-order my book. You will get through this night. So thank you very much to Attitude and thank you for watching. Bye.